Today we're going to talk about the box. I haven't really seen too many reviews discussing the box on this site. I've seen a couple movie recaps, but I haven't seen too many reviews of some of so as to say. So I thought, why not throw mine up there so at least we have one more review about the box for those looking for one. And hey, who knows, maybe it's just because it's such a generic title that all of the videos about the box are just hidden behind other, f other videos with box in the title. With, to which I might say, calling your film The Box might be a little bit too generic of a term to be searchable, if that makes sense. The Box is a sort of thriller starring Cameron Diaz, James Marsden, and Frank Langella. Now, Cameron Diaz has the biggest name on the box. I believe she gets top billing, and that might just be because she's the more popular name. This film came out in 2009. James Marsden hasn't aged a day since the X-Men movies. He hasn't even, even in the Sonic movies that came out, like, almost ten years later, James Marsden hasn't aged a day. That man is awesome. And he's awesome in this, too. When we look at the back, we see a uh, quote, See it? Intriguing. Dreamlike. It was directed by Richard Kelly, who also wrote the screenplay, written for the screen, and it is based upon the short story, Button, Button, by Richard Matheson. The film, at least to me, feels like it has a lot of biblical overtones to it. I don't know if anybody else has mentioned this before, but at least to me, it feels incredibly biblical. And I will get into that if I can remember to get into it when I explain the scenarios to which the book gets its name. Now, we open the film with a bunch of schmuckle-muckles. And then Cameron Diaz and James Marsden are a married couple. They have a child who's roughly around 10 to 12 years old. A typical under 40s adult life of the father and the daughter and their child. It's set, it's set in the 70s. I don't know if it's the early 70s, or the late 70s. And given the sci fi craze, it might be the early 70s. Because, you know, science fiction in the 50s and 60s is incredible. Yeah, and then we have this in pre-Star Wars, so early 70s, that's where it takes place. Cameron Diaz is home while James Marsden is out at, uh, he, James Marsden works for NASA. He's going to be like, he's in line, recruitment-wise, to be an astronaut for the Mars projects and stuff like that. He designed the rover's camera and the the viking mars rover project that happened where they sent a rover to mars to take pictures and all that he figured out how to do all that stuff and how to get the pictures sent back to earth and all that stuff so he's a big science man he's just underappreciated and underpaid and then we have cameron diaz who plays a teacher for a private school and as a teacher her children can get a discount on tuition that's why her son um t goes to the same school now, before she goes there to school for work that day, she gets a knock at the door, and she opens it and sees there's just a box. She brings in the box. James Marsden comes home and says, What's this box? Blah, 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 blah. They open the box, and they find it's just a weird box with a button on top. The button has been locked by a little glass case. There's no key. There's a letter that says, Blah, 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 will come to call on you at 5 o'clock the next day. So the next day happens, James Marston goes to work, She's uh, Cameron Diaz is at home, her son is already on the way to school or whatever. And uh, Frank Langella knocks at the door and says, can I come in, blah, 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 blah. And he explains the game for the box. Now the box is you open the key and it opens the button, it shows the button or whatever. And if you push this button, someone somewhere in the world, a random person whom you don't know, will die. And then, if you push it, you will be rewarded one million dollars, no questions asked. 
He even has the briefcase with a million dollars in it. He opens it up and he hands her $100 as a complimentary gift. And they usually do that so that they could go get that $100 bill checked to see if it's counterfeit or not, or if it's real dollar, real, real money, and all that stuff. And that's exactly what James Marsden ends up doing. He checks the $100 bill to see if it's a real $100 bill. And then it's a moral dilemma. If they push the button, they will get a million dollars. If they don't, he comes to collect the box, and he goes to someone else and sees that other social experiment, psychological experiment, morality experiment, whatever, to somebody else. However, then things start to take a turn, and you get you start to see that there's a conspiracy going on, that, that, that there are events that are being pushed or suggested to happen in certain ways to influence their decision to pushing that button and making that push button button wantingness increase if you will what do i mean All right. so we start with uh, cameron diaz she's at school teaching her class one of the students is a very creepy guy and she wants to see her foot because she's limping all the time so she shows her foot she has no toes because of an accident uh, she has a big toe, but no other toes. It was, it was a childhood accident, and she lost her toes. But she hides it pretty well. And then, and, then, and then later on, she gets called to the principal's office, and the principal says, we have a new policy where we cannot give uh, teachers a discount for their students to go to the school or whatever. And Cameron Diaz says, we already live paycheck to paycheck. Well, this is going to mess us up completely. To which I say, why not just send the son to public school? You know, just, just send him to public school. You don't need to go to the private school. But whatever. Um, so uh, she's cre freaking out about that. She comes home, and now she's even more influenced to push the button. Because now her, it's going to be costing more money next semester for her son to go to the school. James Marsden, he's in line to be the next astronaut. His application is bulletproof, or so he thinks. He gets called to the office by the head big shot man, and the big shot man gives him a letter. He opens the letter, and in the letter it says that he has been denied the application to be the astronaut. Everybody's surprised about this. His bosses are surprised about this. The shift leader, everybody is surprised because this guy is the next astronaut. As far as everybody is concerned, he is a genius. He is bulletproof for that stuff. So they go and, and try to find out why um, he got denied. And the person explains that he got denied because he failed the psychological exam, to which he actually didn't. But we notice both her boss and the guy who denied him his exam both suffer a nosebleed around the same time as um, they did something that they that that uh, goes against their pattern behavior. And the nosebleed is very important. You need to pay attention to that. And the film isn't exactly the best in re in regards to the whole. Uh, is this biblical, is this supernatural, or is this scientific? It doesn't know which one it wants to stay to, 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 to stick with. It doesn't know which one it wants to ground itself to. Because at the end of the film, it makes you think, oh, this is uh, supernatural. But then throughout the first two acts and the first half of the third act, you think, oh, this is more of a scientific thriller. This is all mind control crap. And we'll get to that in a minute, because this is going to be a long video. There's a lot to, uh, to unpack here. And I do have to follow through these part of the film to explain the stuff that I'm about to tell you. So they go both go home, and they're both dejected. They both have bad news to tell each other that the life's going to be a little bit harder for them. They're, the money's going to be a lot uh, tighter. Which means pushing that button to get that $1 million, no questions asked, is feeling a lot more tempting. Which immediately tells me that this was unfair. It was an, the, the odds were stacked against them because of these motive, these actions that these other people took that, that got the nosebleeds. They took these actions that go against their normal be pattern behavior because they were pushed, pushed, pushed. It's mental suggestion, if you will. They were pushed to make these decisions that go against what they would have otherwise have made. Her boss otherwise would not have changed the policy because there's no point in doing that. 
his boss wouldn't have denied him his application because he was actually the perfect candidate, the top candidate, the best candidate. Somebody wanted them to fail. Somebody wanted them to be in a financial crisis to motivate them to push this button in favor of failing the morality check. Which, in my opinion, feels like it's on an unfair stack to disadvantage for this test, if you will. So she pushes the button because they need the money. Franklin Gallup comes over almost immediately with the briefcase with $1 million in it. He collects the box and he leaves. James Marsden tries to return the money saying, We don't want this. I've changed my mind. I didn't push this button. She did. But I disagree with, with this action. You need to take this money back. And, and uh, Franklin Gallup says, I can't do that. It's against rules. I can't do that. So, they have the money, but they don't spend it, and it's just sit sitting in a briefcase. And then they start noticing a bunch of other people acted strangely. They get nosebleeds. And so he starts investigating Frank Langella. She starts investigating Frank Langella. And it's almost as if Frank Langella has an om limited omniscience. Which means he can see and hear through people's eyes. The pe and not everybody's, but certain people. The people who get nosebleeds. It's only those people. It's not anybody else who doesn't get nosebleeds. It's just the people who do get nosebleeds. Their actions are influenced through mind control somehow. And and at the halfway point of the movie, we are told that Harlan, this is frankly yellow, uh, um, Harlan was in an accident during the first Mars mission, the Viking project. And he was struck by lightning, and he survived. And ever since he was struck by lightning, he's been acting really weird ever since. And the, he's been in the NSA, the CIA, and all that stuff, and he's doing a bunch of weird stuff. And then we learn about human mind control projects. I don't know the actual project name, but there's a lot of stuff in here to push the idea that this is all a sham. This is all a social psychological experiment by the big secret, secret government -y types that are m meddling with frontal lobes and implementing, I don't know, either through radio waves or what. This is all based on, like, big conspiracy crap in the, the late, the early 70s and the 60s and the 50s. There, there were a lot of these types of conspiracies back then. It feels like this film is pushing on those types of conspiracies into, into, into making a movie about that. How invisible radio waves and all that stuff, they, they're talking about the radio waves. And, you know, they did that with the cell tower waves, too, back in the back in the, 90, the 80s and 90s. They talked about that with the mind control, how they might do that, too. They were conspiracy theories. All, there's, there, there's still some today with the 5Gs and all that stuff. So it's nothing new. Okay, nothing new with the radio waves and the mind control crap. Well, that's just what the film is trying to push it towards you. It's trying to push that point of view towards you for the first half of the movie as they're trying to do this. But then there's some psych supernatural stuff as well happening. How um, Frank Legella seems to be able to appear anywhere at, the sa at, at any time. It's like he has the ability to teleport. But then we learned that they have developed technologies that help you teleport people. Secret CIA crap, you know? We, we, you know Area 51 type of secret, secret stuff. So maybe they found some technology while exploring Mars and that changed everything. They learned how to do mind control stuff now and teleporting stuff now. And, and maybe that's what they had to fit. They were able to figure out. Who knows? And then we get to the biblical stuff. Then we get to the biblical So the end of the film, the son is kidnapped by F F Harlan, a.k.a. Franklin Gala. He kidnaps the kid and he does something to the kid to blind and make the kid deaf. So now he is blind and deaf. He cannot hear, he cannot see, he's stuck in the bathroom. And they don't know how or why this happened. And, and you, the viewer, don't know how or why, how Frank Lakella did this to the kid. But this is all part of the experiment. Since she pushed the button, he now has to shoot her in the heart to save the child. But then he would go to jail for murder of his wife. So he would ha they both have to suffer in order to save the child, who is innocent. Now, they could just ignore the shooting of the, chi the, of, of the wife in order to 
not have that happen, but then the sun would not recover. But then you get the idea that maybe they just temporarily drugged him. They temporarily drugged him with an experience that makes him blind and deaf for a short period of time. And the longer they hesitated, they would realize that the son would actually come back to his senses and everything would be okay. And this is all part of a social experiment. And that if they listen to... The whole part of this experiment is if you listen to the authority that tells you to do an ethical thing, you should suffer for that because you should have known better, right? I guess that's the idea I'm getting from it, from this scientific part of it. But now let's go over to the biblical supernatural stuff. Now, anybody who has grown up in a Christian household or whatever, you would learn about the, 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 the Adam and Eve story. Even if you're not, even if you're an atheist and all that stuff, you might know about the Adam and Eve story. And the, 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 the super, super summarized version is we got the Adam and we got the Eve. We got the Adam, we got the Eve. And then we have the snake. And the snake comes in, they all live in the garden of happiness. And in the garden of the happiness with all the trees and the immortality and the sunshine and the daisies and the paradise, the, 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 the big man upstairs says, hey, you can do whatever you want, just don't pick my apples. Just don't eat my apples, right? He says that. Don't eat my apples. I'm going to put them here. I'm going to put them here. I'm going to put them on display. You're right here for you to see, but you can't have them. Um, and if I didn't want you to have them, I probably shouldn't have put them there to begin with, but maybe I'm testing you. So he puts the tree there with all the the apples, and then the snake comes in and says, hey, why shouldn't you eat those apples, man? Why don't you eat those apples? Then you'll get some good stuff out of it, man. He's hiding stuff from you. So the snake convinces Eve to eat the apple, a.k.a. push the button. And then when they push the button, mortality hits with the humanity. Mortality is in pew pew get rid of the person who ate the button, ate the, ate, ate the apple. It's all very synonymous to that scenario. It's very synonymous. And yet, the idea they're trying to push towards you is that Franklin Gal is actually more of a representative of the of the happy light, happy sunshine and daisies people, and the happy sunshine and daisies people are trying to say that we're shutting purgatory, the middle area, we got the happy place, we got the middle area, and then we got the bad place, and they're like, we're shutting the middle place down, there's no point in keeping this here because you guys are done, we're done with you guys. And it's like, they're going to all these efforts and lengths to do this. <laughs> So it makes me think it's more of a supernatural. No, it's not. It's making me think it's more of a scientific thing rather than a supernatural thing. And here's my theory on why that is. These people have been pushed to suggestion to certain actions, right? In the middle of the movie, they are at a Christmas party. And they get to pick a, a present from from a pile of presents at random. It's a secret Santa sort of thing. But no, there's no name tags in any of the presents. Nobody knows what's in the presents. You just get to pick one up when your name is called. So, uh, James Marston's name is called first. He goes over there to pick up a present to take for opening and the presents and all that stuff. And and, and, and yet he, he seems to have been... On instinct, he picks up a box that looks very similar to the box that Karen D has opened. So he picks that up and brings it to his t seat, his table. He opens it, and inside is a picture of Franklin Gallup before his accident with the thunder strike, the lightning strike, which means that he ha he w he was supposed to have picked up that box. He, maybe there was mental suggestion going on through the radio waves and all that crap that he was supposed to pick up that box instead of any of the other presents that are on the pile but had he picked up any of the other ones this whole experiment would not have worked I am theorizing that this entire experiment was a psychological psychical radio wavesy wavesy mind control experiment and they're hiding it behind supernatural stuff instead but there's just enough information kept out from you that you could either suspect that it might be supernatural rather than uh scientific it's, it's almost brilliantly put together in that way but it just doesn't stick the landing it 
doesn't stick the landing. There's not enough evidence to support the supernatural side. And there's way too much evidence to support the scientific side, but it doesn't stick the landing with the scientific side. Instead, it tries to stick the landing with the supernatural side. So you have to formulate the conclusions. How can you debunk this, or how can you debunk this to, to prove whichever conclusion is more correct? And yet, there's enough information to suggest that it's all sci scientific... Um, CIA, mind control, conspiracy, 60, 50, 60 sci-fi conspiracy crap. A bunch of fear-scaring stuff that was going on at the time. And given the time period of the movie, it makes more sense for them to do this. Versus this. It may... may and honestly, the James Marsden character... The, I, I have no... I don't blame the James Marsden James Marsden himself. I bl I'm I'm more looking at how he was written, how the character was written, because throughout the bulk of the film he was skeptical, until he went through this doorway of magic or whatever, and then he even at the start of the movie you are told that magic is merely science that you can't explain. Right, magic is merely science that is that is unexplainable. So this doorway of water or whatever in the middle of the movie, he even mentions it under breath, underhandedly, magic is merely science that you can't explain. So he can't explain this doorway that just appeared before him in the halfway point. So he passes it off as magic. He walks through the doorway and he ends up teleported back to his house through some sort of water teleportation or something. And uh, after that, he's, he has been changed a little bit. But he's still skeptical. He's very skeptical of Franklin Gala, and he, he's um, working with other people to try to figure out this whole CIA cover-up with going on with the Franklin Gala character and all that stuff. How he's able to see and hear through other people's senses. And if you paid attention throughout most of the film, the nosebleeds, people getting nosebleeds, their actions are being controlled. They're in, he's able to see through their eyes. He's able to hear through their ears. Type of surveillance, big brother type of thing that goes into some paranoid conspiracy theorist sweat dream type of stuff. And it's like how they're able to bug the brain, literally. So your own thoughts are not safe from surveillance. That's the type of conspiracy crap that I get the impression of that this top of the film, this is the scientific portion of the film is trying to push. And if you believe that that's what it's trying to push, then this supernatural ending is not actually what it was actually all about. And that was all just a trick, a social experiment to see how much they can mind control people to get them to be willing to kill for them. And that's the whole thing. You have to, the whole idea was trying to find someone who was not ethical enough to refuse the money from the box. If you refuse the money, then you're out of the experiment. You're not what they're looking for. But if you do press the button, then you are unethical enough, selfish enough to be considered part of this experiment. And you enter the next phase of the experiment. And the final phase of the experiment is pushing the husband into killing the wife who was the one who pushed the button. In every single experiment that they do, the wife is always the one who pushes the button, it's not the husband. And I honestly believe that they fixed the entire thing for all these other social experiments. That they end up fixing the whole financial situation between these two people, between the two people, not these two people in general, but the whole social experiment is always dealing with couples under the age of 40 with a child. That's the whole experiment. They can, if you're not in that group, if you're not married with a child, you are out of the experiment. You're not considered part of the experiment. Which honestly means that this is all some social experiment. It's not some psych supernatural stuff. So, they, uh, um, I'm losing my track here. Where am I going with this? Um, where am I going with this? Where am I going with this? Where am I going with this? Okay, so it makes you think that they fix the, the, the financial situation, how they have mind-controlled various people in 
the the test subject's life to influence their actions, to influence their behavior. The mental suggestion of Cameron Diaz pushing the button is pushed through either radio waves or all sorts of other mental suggestion of the people that she encounters, and the, the, the words that they speak to her will eventually influence her actions to push the button, because she encounters a bunch of people with nosebleeds before she pushes the button, and she has influence, she's, she's been influenced to take an action. And then he has gone through a bunch of stuff, and then he was influenced to pick up the box at the Christmas party and find the picture of Frank Langella, which implies that the whole investigation phase of this thing was intentional to get them to figure this stuff out, but it holds back enough information from them to make them not be able to confirm anything. And then, but at the end, like what I was saying with him is that uh, he was skeptical of Harlan uh, Franklin Gallup throughout the entire the entirety of the film until the very end when he starts to suspect that it might be a supernatural thing instead which in my opinion might be the CIA's mental suggestions are finally starting to take hold of him it's finally starting to work on him and um, it's a film that you have to watch I could take another 25 minutes trying to explain the supernatural element and the conspiracy element and try to combine the two in a way I could try to exp try to defend the supernatural element and say how the supernatural element is actually part of the whole scientific conspiracy, how it's influencing that. And I can also try to say how the scientific element is, is influencing the supernatural element as a cover-up story to their s scientific experiments of mind control to get people to be willing to kill for them and all that stuff because the the best way to influence someone through psychological manipulation and, and psychic manipulation radio wave visual radio waves these uh, paranoid psycho whatever of the 60s and stuff is to get your test subject to kill the closest person in their life which is exactly what happened in the film is exactly what happened they were able to influence him enough to take her out but in, because he was told that if he did it would save his son which theoretically maybe he was just temporarily blinded maybe he was just temporarily put under deafness and that he would recover on his own had he whether he shot her or not the whole point of the experiment might have just been him trying whether or not they could convince him to kill someone then, and that all of the people who succeed in killing them are part of the program, are their secret hitman program, maybe. That is how brilliantly written this is, is that I can try to find explanations for both sides of the argument and try to make it work for either side, because either one could, hypothetically, be applied to work. It is a brilliant film, and I definitely think you should watch it.